it really seems like you're getting into it in there. Uh, hold on a minute. Uh, I'll, I'll just, just, just give me a minute. Everything's fine. Okay, sure. No problem. Oh, there we go. All right, I got to clear out of my own room now because I've decided I'm going to turn my fan up all the way. Yeah. And here we go. And walk away. I'm walking away now. Okay, great. Are you going to try and – is this an, an effort to cool your room or, or heat it? Now, this is an effort to dry my clothes. Oh, I see. Okay. Uh, in the end, the electricity bill is probably higher than just using the dryer, but uh, I like to believe I'm saving money. Okay. Well, you're saving money and you're, you're protecting the environment by using more electricity. Yes, sir. <laughs> the environment loves it when you use electricity. <laughs> Yeah, it's just making my life harder for no reason. It's what I do. It is what you do. All right, are we ready? Sure. Here we go. Why not? You don't seem ready. No, I'm ready. How do I not seem ready? Well, I just heard a lot of thumping and kicking and thrashing. That's all. I'm sitting down. That's what happens when I sit down. Okay. All right. Very good. Well, welcome to A Shin Show, a very special father-son edition. With me is son Noah in Gainesville, Florida. I'm right here in the greater Washington, D.C. area. And the big news here in the Washington, D.C. area is the release of the Mueller report, which found that the Trump campaign did not actively conspire with the Russian government to impact the 2016 election. Did nothing wrong. <laughs> no collusion. The president said so himself. So well, that, I, that's I guess, that. you know, this is nice. It puts a nail in that, puts a nail in that coffin, proved him right. Well, it seems to have. Seems to have. In any event. So that's, uh, that's kind of the big news of the moment. NCAA basketball tournament still going on. I'm alive in my office pool. That's exciting. Well, yeah. How could it not be? Right. A lot depends, of course, on... What happens with Duke and, of course, what happens with, you know, some other teams. But at the end of the day, here's the bottom line, son. If Kentucky wins the tournament, I win my office pool. And then do you know what I get? What? Bragging rights. What more could you want? Money. But what well, I'm getting is bragging rights. Bra bragging rights are really better than money at this point. All right. Uh, I don't know, dog. Uh, money's pretty good. <laughs> But I'm not getting that, so no sense worrying about it. Uh, anyway, so uh, that's that's kind of the news. Also, kind of other some big news, some other big news rather, is you know all this flooding in the Midwest. Flooding. I haven't even heard a single thing about that. Yeah, there's a lot of flooding in the Midwest, particularly in guess where, Omaha, Nebraska, where your brother Sarah, I mean your brother Nick and Sarah, sister Sarah live. You know, your family, part of them, a couple of family members live in Omaha. They seem to have done all right, although Sarah's basement did flood. Were she here, she could tell us how that she's making out with that, but we don't know. Anyway, some of that flood water is cleared out, but it's just moved downstream. So a lot of flooding in northwest Missouri now. Epic floods. And the flood season hasn't really gotten underway yet. So could be a lot so worse, be worse before it gets better. Yeah, could be worse. That's bad. Yeah. So what's news with you, pal? No. Nah. Let's see. I lost my key to keys today for a, a whole two hours, and it was a horrifying two hours. It's highly panicking when you lose your keys. Yeah, so here's what happened. All right. Yeah. We want to go get boba because there's this boba place around here. What's a boba? It, it's it's just another word for the bubble tea. You know what that stuff is? It's got little tapioca balls in the, in the bottom of it. No, I don't have the fight. It, I have no idea what you're talking about. Explain. You, you never had it? It's amazing. Uh, tell me about it. It's, it's like, okay, so the, the gist is, right, they got these tapioca pearls on the bottom, these tapioca balls, and they're, they're just like, they're like gummies, essentially. They're, they got, they're kind of chewy, you know? Yeah. And uh, they absorb the flavor of things around them. So what, what you do usually is you'll soak them in sugar, then you pour them into the drink, and then they have the flavor of the drink with some sugar, and they're nice and sweet, little, little chewy things. While you drink your delicious milk tea, um, and there's a bunch of, there's usually, the traditional flavor is some, it's like a mix, I don't fucking know, but it, it, it's got, you know, it's sweet. It's tasty. Kind of like they have the Thai milk tea. You, you've had that, right? Oh, yeah, I've had that. It's, it's delicious. Like that. They have that flavor a lot of times. And so you've, you got that. Yeah, we got this drink. We got these delicious drinks, right? And then we get back to, uh, to her place and because uh, I do laundry over there. Right. I'm going to have to try to get my laundry. Well, hang on. Laundry. Hang on. Obviously, you don't dry your laundry there, but you do it there. You wash it there. I wash it there. But it's like, okay, so 
it's a buck fifty to get your laundry washed, all right, to put it in this washing machine. And it's a buck twenty five to dry it. And I just I just don't believe in it, man. I'm not spending the extra buck twenty five. <laughs> right. You're gonna come home, put it on a line, crank your fan on it. That's what I'm doing. That's yeah. that's exactly I get because it got this little drying rack that I bought from Aldi. Right. Uh, like five bucks. So uh, yeah. and I'll bet it's just I bet it's just outstanding. You know, if I had more time, it would be. Yeah. I'm surprised. Oh. Hello. Oh, it looks like Nick is falling in. Is that Nick Shin? Yeah. Good morning. Shalom and good evening. I turned it too in microphone. Do I sound all right? Uh, you sound a little uh, like the mic's not plugged in, but that's okay. Hold on. How about now? Oh, yeah, much better now. That's better? Yeah, actually, using the microphone helps a lot. Yeah, well, okay. Thanks. So, <laughs> so smart and wise. Oh, oh, you who are so wise in the ways of science. So wise. <laughs> oh, Sarah's joined us as well. Noah's already on the line. He's explaining how he lost his keys this afternoon and then found them. I got your text that said that you were looking for them. Yeah, it was, it was a nightmare. This is a nightmare. What kind of sound system you got going? Wait, so first off, let's explain how it was a nightmare. Or maybe we should wait till we start recording till we get into this. No, we're into it, dude. We're recording because we. I didn't know if you guys. I mean, I never got it's a text. Ten fucking me. minutes late. Yeah, okay. I'm showing up late to the we gig. Fe- we <laughs> fell in line, yeah. Mister Nap. I mean, I just I didn't know. You know, I didn't know what was going on. All right, I, nap time. Well, you never said at five o'clock is a go. So I thought, well, I might as well just take a nap. You know. Yeah, I guess. You're I right. want you to know that in the hour. Was it two hours? Two hours, two? yeah. I put my entire basement back together. Hey, so I guess thank you. You're and welcome. I helped. I guess you're welcome. So um, so anyway, yeah. So Noah lost his keys. And he's in Gainesville. By the way, thanks for joining us, Sarah Nicholas in Omaha. And in fact, I was just telling Noah how, in fact, your basement had flooded, Sarah. And I was looking for an update. Now I'm getting one. That's it. There's the update. Yeah, it's all... <laughs> <laughs> well, so is am I to understand that the flooding then is over in Omaha? Uh, where we are at, yes. On Hilltop, flooding is over. On Hilltop, yes. I see. All right. I'm glad my basement didn't flood. I'm kind of surprised it didn't. I'm shocked. I mean, that yeah. sounds like the one good thing about Benson is you didn't get a flooded basement. Yeah. yeah. All right, good. I'm glad that didn't happen. So now, meanwhile, Noah is telling me about the fact that they got this delicious kind of, what What was this drink called, Noah? Boba. I mean, I got the, uh, what did I get? It was like, it was green jelly, grass jelly, grass jelly. Is that the uh, thing with the beads? Yeah, it's the thing with the beads. See, I didn't know what it was. That's, I'm still confused. I never yeah. heard a thing about beads. I don't know. Yeah. What is, what, is, what, is, what, are the, what do the beads play into the drinkage here? Do you drink <laughs> beads? The, no, no. Okay. These beads are like these delicious, chewy little balls of goodness, is what they are. Okay. You need a big special straw to suck them up. Uh, it's it's an I don't know. I guess it's an Asian thing. Must be. I don't want lumps in my I drink. Too. I don't think it's like a slushy but gooey. Mm, not right. always. Right. So, but here's the point. Irrespective of the drink involved, which was a boba, somehow or another, at the end of this boba process, you don't have your keys. Anyway, the point is I do my laundry at her place. I go to get my laundry for my car. No keys in my pocket. I'm like, oh fuck. So we retrace our whole steps and everything. Yeah. Don't find them. I ask everybody. I'm like, oh, you know, I asked the store, the boba place. They're like, no, we haven't seen them. And then uh, we get back to her place. She's like, well, maybe someone turned them into the front desk. And I'm like, why didn't we fucking check that first? And uh, and then she calls them, and uh, they were in the front desk. All right. Uh, they were there. Oh, nice. Yeah. That's a good happy ending story right there. That is happy ending. At least you found them. But it, it doesn't end there. No. No. Oh, okay. I was like, well, who turned them in? You know, can I thank them? And they were like, we don't fucking know. <laughs> they just showed up. Exactly. But but they were like, but someone might know in that room over there. So I go over to their little study room and I'm like, hey, did anyone turn in some keys? And she's like, this little blonde girl walks up to me and she's like, no. <laughs> my friend did. Wow. So okay. these keys just, there was a mystery benefactor who was invisible. <laughs> yes. Well, I found, so I, I tracked down, so her friend's like, oh, I can give you your number. And so I gave her a call. I said, thank you. And she refused to let me bake her cookies. It made me sad. Oh, well, you know what? She probably thought you were a creep. Yeah. Most definitely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's the thought that counts. Yeah, good job on that. So we already mentioned to Noah that the big news is that uh, the Mueller report has come out and has determined that the 
Trump campaign did not actively conspire with the Russian government to affect the outcome of the 2016 election. To which I reply, well, that's kind of what was supposed to not have happened, have happened, right? Good. Yeah. I get. Yeah, exactly. I think that's a positive outcome. Good news, because otherwise we would have, you know, we'd be dealing with traitors at the highest level of the government, and that would be bad, okay? Okay. Bad, bad, bad. Yeah. Cool. So good news. Good news. You know what I did want to talk to you about, though? What, yeah. what I found most interesting in the news this week, and I'm glad all three of you are on the line for this. What's that? So it turns out that Americans are like super pessimistic about where we're going to be in 2050. Okay. Had you heard about this at all? I'm super pessimistic about where the world's going to be in 2050, but yeah. Well, okay. So let's talk about that for a second, because uh, if you are pessimistic, you are representative of a large degree of Americans. But you yeah. say the, you said the world, but not America. Well, America is included in the world, right? I mean, <laughs> no, we're so exceptional, kind of like... son. We're not. We're not part of the world. We're above it. Oh, okay. Well, America and the world. Oh, I see. America first, right? Well, I'm. Ju- I just say that because of the environment. The environment's kind of fucked. Yeah. Like, okay. You can't, it's not just. I've said it before, but it's not like once. That's something. Once you start in motion, it's. If it's fixable, it would take so long. Okay, so here, let me let me share with you the outcome of this recent survey from the Pew Research Center. Hit us. So a majority of Americans believe the U.S. will decline in global stature in the next 30 years. Six in 10 Americans think the U.S. will be less important in the world in 2050. And then... Well, what does less important mean? It means, you know, we won't be less as... Less relevant. Yeah, exactly. What do you... Like, in what Most context? Relevant, relevant to who? Who cares? Like we well, we What do you mean? So does that mean like French people and German people won't trade? be talking about us as much? No. It means like trade agreements and oil and, and general, uh, you know, I import think, prices. So does, this, so does this all translate to just a bad economy for us? Like what what is, what are the negative repercussions well, of America not being relevant? Well, hang on, let me let me press on with the survey. Nearly 75% of the public believes the gap between rich and poor will grow in the coming decades. 65% think the country will become more politically divided. Six in 10 Americans also believe a terrorist attack as bad or worse than that of September 11th, 2001, will happen at some point before 2050. Mm -hmm. And 54% of Americans say they believe the U.S. economy will be weaker in 2050. Yeah, that may. I guess uh, the terrorist. I when I first heard the terrorist attack thing, I didn't agree. But I guess that kind of depends on what. You define as Whoa! A terrorist attack. Somebody getting a phone call? Yeah, it's it's me. I'm sorry. Okay. My my girlfriend. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna put this thing on silent. Okay. Well, you know, maybe put you should talk to her. Thing on silent. Put like, the silencer on it. By the way, unlike you, Nicholas Shin, I actually met Noah's girlfriend. She's a delightful, delightful young woman. Uh, okay. Good. That's good to hear. <laughs> yeah. I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> Isn't it better Everyone than likes a delightful girlfriend instead of a batshit crazy girlfriend? <laughs> <laughs> so that's good. Good, good well, job I mean... to everyone working over there. <laughs> <laughs> right in the Noah girlfriend department. <laughs> yeah, good job to those people over there. Right. Positive reviews. I'll tell you what, <laughs> that manager is going to get a get a I think a promotion this year. Maybe a bonus Christmas bonus. Oh, for sure, for sure, a Christmas bonus. All right. So uh, an overwhelming majority see uh, a 90 percent believe a woman will be president by 2050, although women are less optimistic about that prospect. Imagine that. Do you think do you think it'll be more politically divided in 2050? I think there I think all it'll take is one great president, some cool ass president. I feel like it's all together. Well, I feel like we've got to hit it at a certain point. You can't become more polarized. There's got to be a plateau. Yeah. There's got to be a certain point. Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's it's a civil war where we're split in two countries. I think that's it. Well, one hopes that it never gets to that point. But who, what would the sides be? Is it just going to be the left side versus the right side? No, like, it'd be like a big from Nebraska over to the west is one side and Nebraska over to the east is another side? Because what if New Hampshire likes California? You know what I'm saying? They're on opposite sides of the country. How does that civil war work? Well, Is it just all the states and like a free for all type deal? Not nah, done. I think it'd be more like little coalitions, you know, like it'd be the northeastern block, you know, so kind of like a like the Warsaw Pact, and then and then you'd have like the little probably like it's some kind of midwestern deal, but I don't know about that. I Definitely guess California just or 
Washington and Washington would team up. Texas would just be like, fuck y'all. I'm going to do my own thing. Texas would go go back into Mexico probably. Oh, I got so? that. But what I do think would happen. Yeah. The batteries are connected as a series adding powder source. <laughs> what the what? hell? Sorry. Our, our robot that, overlords weighing in. <laughs> a robot teaching you how to make some sort of potion. Actually, yeah. So it's probably going to be us against Canada, if you boil down. I mean, this Canada is one of the, one of the states, isn't it? Yeah. Sure. Wow. <laughs> wow. Wow. Sorry, Noah. It's Noah's Canadian, American. so that was that was just kind of that was unfair. Sorry. Low blow, man. Sorry. Classic American. Classic American ski. But it does speak to, I think, a sense. Now, we've got what's interesting about this is we have an economy that is pretty good. We've got unemployment that's very low. You would think that more Americans would be super optimistic. I have an opinion about why uh, Americans are not optimistic. Would you like to hear it? Yeah, I would, I would like to hear that. My opinion is that most Americans are less optimistic than they otherwise would be because Social media is the driving factor in the divisions in this country, and people are spending too much time on it. People are living in a surveillance state in which they have opted in, and it bums them out, but they're not sure why. Are you, so are you saying that uh, people may have a skewed vision on just how bad or good certain things might be because they're not uh, being informed through the correct uh, channels? Uh, that's an interesting way of putting it. I just think people have a low-level malaise because they're living in a society that they don't understand. I don't yeah, fully okay. understand it, frankly. I mean, I don't. Well, know. it's all so new, you know. It's this is all in its infancy. Ten, ten years, years ago, ago, this wasn't a thing. Well, maybe, maybe ten. Fifteen, 15 years, ago. years ago. That is true. Fifteen years ago, I'd never heard of Facebook. Yeah. So, you know, it's hard for people to digest sometimes. That's why I don't even fuck with it at all. It's not like I don't. I look down on people who do fuck with it. I just can't. I just well, you don't. Much. You don't do social media, but you do do Reddit. So that's. But that's still different. Have, I'm not posting. I don't know the people on there. You know. No. What I mean? No. 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 But I'm saying that the site itself could be could have. So Twitter, for example, is very left leaning, in terms of like the users they ban and all that kind of shit. And sure, yeah. it's a social media, but yeah. it's still a place where you interact with strangers. Let's say which is closer to the, not, the user base on Reddit. But it's not but, the same content, though. It's interesting, because well, I, I don't think of Twitter as left-leaning. The single largest person who's got a following on Twitter is who? President Trump. Well, no, but, but the that's data, just for the scandal, the, bro. That's the soap opera. The, the, well, the Twitter executives are POTUS, less, right? Like, isn't, isn't that the Twitter handle for just any president, or no? No, no. He's got his own deal. Oh, okay. Uh, it, the tw so there was a a different po a different podcast that we were listening to where the the Twitter president uh, went on and was was talking about basically how it seems like those who have more um, right wing ideals get banned more often and more harshly than those who left about the debate ideals. between the yeah. one guy yeah okay yeah, yeah 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 so so I mean the data supports the fact that Twitter's algorithms and the people who review the algorithms for banning users is in favor of left leaning American politics uh, as opposed to right wing. With, with the exception well, of President Trump. Also, another big thing that they pointed out was that they have, it's not just a merit, like, you know, they have how many, 20, I don't know. A bunch. A, like a billion, a couple billion users or something. Well, Twitter, you know, so, I think it's less than a billion, but still. All right, so a couple hundred million. Yeah, right? I think that's fair. Sure, let's uh, let's call it that. So, but that encompasses more than America. So the one point that the lady made that I thought was pretty good is like, yeah, we, you know, we're just trying to go with what the world thinks is okay and what the world thinks isn't okay. There's some algorithms. There's some shit that we miss. Some things that slip through the cracks. But like, you know, we're not just taking into account American politics. We're taking into account all politics. But my point is, is that any sort of of human created thing is going to have a bias like there's no way yeah. to make things yeah. uh completely yeah. equal so you're always mm -hmm. going to have i mean this is true of anything right even news outlets you're always going to have a, a certain amount of bias in your news source so you have to be able to as a consumer you have to be able to take things from both sides and aggregate them yourself and make informed decisions about things. You can't well, take things from from one source. Yeah, that's a good reason why you shouldn't just get everything 
from Twitter, you know? Well, and that's why I'm saying, you know, be, okay, sure. So or even just media, Reddit or any one place. You our know media I mean? is very, like like Dad touched on earlier, our media is very sensation, sensationalized, right? Like you see all these bad stories and everything's blown up and and like this whole, this whole uh, Mueller thing, right? Like people are going to be on to the next big witch hunt, right? Because they yeah. want scandal. After this, yeah. Right. Yeah. And I guess... I don't know where I'm going with this uh, other right. than <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, I'm waiting for the than, big payoff. Come on now. <laughs> uh, the payoff is fucking do your homework, guys. <laughs> <laughs> do your homework. Drink your milk, motherfuckers. All right. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds good. Too much. Yeah. Calm, right. calm down. Yeah. Calm down. Take a step back. Look, you know, get outside a little bit and then get reassess a your life. Do some yoga. <laughs> Buy a yoga mat. Get a Hell, little skin garden. Yes. Do some meditation. Deep Meditate. breathing. <laughs> Aromatherapy. Some hot tea with some honey in it. Oh, right. But in the morning as the sun rises. In Don't the morning, do that shit yeah. at night. I knew yeah. there would be a payoff. Tea in it. Feel the earth under your feet as it breathes into you. Get a boba. Hike, hike to the top of a mountain at three in the morning and watch the sun rise from the top. <laughs> watch the dew as it is, evaporates off the grass. Yeah. Right. Watch the dew form on the blade. Think positive, dude. Yeah. Focus your center. Realign your chi. <laughs> Namaste. <laughs> so... Question for you guys. Thinking, speaking of positivity, um, yeah. so what does everyone think about the yield curve inversion? Well, before we get into the sign for recession that you're talking about, the possible recession that's coming on, let's wrap up this previous conversation okay. by just asking both of you, all three of you, in fact, why do you think America is pessimistic? Okay, I, I think, think America is pessimistic because of the sensationalist media we don't know how to look at things on a grand scale we take things as the sound bites are given to us now with that being said people are disillusioned with our current presidency and how and we're disillusioned with how the world views us like there is a ton of bad shit like nick said the fucking environment is going to hell hell oh, okay so, okay so, i agree i agree with uh, all that all that right sums it up to me. okay noah you know, I, I I think it's just a healthcare thing. You know what I'm saying? If you're healthy, oh. you're happier. Oh, that's a good that's, point. I think that we plays are, into it as well. Yeah. Yeah, we are an unhappy country. Mm. Unhealthy. For, we work harder. Sure. I mean, I read a thing recently that was like, uh, you know, Americans are super hardworking and super unhappy. It's like it's almost like if you give people time off, they have a better quality of life. Yeah, not as unhappy or as hard worked as Chinese people though. Well, I mean, you don't know they don't, have, they don't have nets outside of our factories. Can we, can we go one fucking episode without talking about the godless communists? <laughs> Look, it's just, I mean, it's morbid, okay? But, like, the oh. fact that they have to have nets outside of their factories to catch oh. the people trying to kill themselves from their shitty work conditions. Now, are we also going to be talking about the organ harvesting again? Because that's another favorite topic. Rusty, yeah. the, orgus, the organ <laughs> oh, harvesting clown comes on Tuesday. <laughs> the fucking, the, the jumping off the, the smokestack of the factory was wasn't gruesome enough for you, Dan. Well, no, well, you know, we were having a net for that condition because we know it happens to like one in five. They, they make no, you sign an anti-suicide clause, oh, which is ridiculous. Like, if what happens gonna... if you violate that? <laughs> like, <laughs> like, what? like, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> well, what's the punishment? <laughs> you tried to kill yourself. You're going to regret that, my friend. <laughs> really? You Am get I delayed I... in the whole reincarnation? They give you the cycle. Chinese water torture. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. See, see the the afterlife. They they pick. Oh no, wait. They're godless, though, right? Exactly. Okay. Godless mind. heathens, I God, guess. Communists. Allegedly. Communists. Allegedly. No, it's a fact. They're god godless communists. <laughs> All right. What, so anyway, yeah. the point is this, though. Uh, that you're right, Americans do tend to be hardworking, unhappy, unhealthy people who are s drowning in their own abundance in terms of food, certainly. And um, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a tough situation. So there you go. But on the other hand, I mean, I'm <laughs> here. I am standing in my four thousand dollar sound booth in my four hundred thousand dollar home, bitching about my condition. So there you go. No one's happy. Yeah. Yeah. Like a like a true red blooded American, right. as they say, mo money, mo problem. I I don't want much, kids. I just want more. Is that so much to ask? I don't no. think so. I really don't. That's perfectly reasonable. It sure is. Okay, so um, onward then. Now that we've covered the depression aspect of things and found out why Americans are so darn bummed out, it might be a good time to think about something that would cheer every American up, and that's a visit to Ziff's. Fine dining and a relaxed continental atmosphere in Invercargill, New Zealand. After your meal, head on over to the Throne Room Tattoo. Get yourself a heavy tattoo after your light, refreshing meal at Ziff's, both in Invercargill, New Zealand, proud unknowing sponsors of a Shin Show.
get that visit in before they close our borders. <laughs> yeah, uh, the, the segues are so smooth, Dad. Well, so smooth segues. Thank you, thank you. Really well, can shoehorn them in there, like yeah. flawlessly, seamlessly. It's a pro- it's a professional in me, and it might. Hey, be, yeah. yeah, go ahead. I was going to ask, did so? How many uh, people here saw the movie Get Out? I did oh, not I did. see the movie Get Out. Oh, what you the didn't? fuck? Noah, did you see it? Of course I saw it. You not guys only... thought it was good or no? I liked it. Why? It, well, I thought it was good. It was really cool. had a cool twist at the end and shit. Noah? And... I, I did not like the fact that it was basically our grandmother. Uh, well, but, yeah. But, but well, yeah, that, I've had nightmares like that. With is this hypnosis. a spoiler alert? Your grandmother did it? Basically. Uh, yeah, right. kind of. Yeah, okay. Grand, yeah. Grandma had a hand. Anyway, so that guy who made it, Jordan Peele. Yes. From Key and Peele. Yes. Which is a fucking awesome show. I never gave it a chance yeah. when it was on. And like yes. I've just been watching clips of Dude. it on YouTube. It is so funny. My favorite Key and Peele skit is where they're texting. And so the one guy gets all riled up. And, oh, yeah. yeah. He's just texting normal shit. But it like seems. Dude, I feel that way with time. you and me all the time. I'll text you something and you'll text me back like one word. And I'm like. <laughs> yeah. But then I, I, I do that all the that. time. Key yeah. and Peele skit, and he hands him the bat. Oh. <laughs> okay, so you're talking about just I've seen here. So here's the one Key and Peele sketch that I've seen that is burned into my memory, which is the teacher, the black teacher who is mispronouncing <laughs> oh, yeah. the names of all the, so the white kids. A A A A A Ron and Blocky instead Denise. of Blake and Denise instead of Denise and so forth. It's really, okay. It's really anyways, of American so, culture at this yeah. point. What's that? Yeah. Noah? Say again, so that video is really a pinnacle of American culture at this point. Yeah, it kind of is. Yeah, that whole show, honestly. But uh, the point is that guy made another movie. Called Us, that Called I hear Us. is terrific. Have you seen it? No, I'm going to see it on Tuesday. Yeah, oh. I got like, I so allegedly uh, a, a 100% on Rotten Tomatoes, but I saw it the other day. And uh, it was, oh, you've seen it already? Yeah, I saw it. Uh, and it was good. I It was enjoyable, but I it's... I'm not going to ruin it. I don't think it was as good as Get Out. Okay. And I don't think it's a it, like it's a movie you maybe want to watch twice, you know, just because, you know, so how some movies you want to watch it from the beginning knowing everything, but yeah. but uh at, I don't know, maybe not though, you know. I, I watched it the one time and I was like, yeah, okay, that was good, but I think it might be good. Get Out has a high rewatch factor to me. I see. So what I the review I read of us said you may want to see it a second time knowing what you know just exactly what yeah. you said yeah but yeah, you're saying I, I get out about that as well you're saying get out is more like that and less us no i'm saying get out like just for like there's something in that movie us that you that like you know i'm trying to liken it to another movie but i can't think of anything off the top of my head maybe like a book of eli Oh, you know? I see. Yeah. You want to go through and watch Book of Eli all over again now that you know that he was blind from the start. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, that was a twist. That was a good it's twist. Like, I forgot about that. That was a good that was a good that was a good book and yeah. a good movie. And a good yeah. twist. Great twist. Now that being said, Noah, I believe that you constantly encouraged me to see Get Out. Didn't you? Yeah, I did. Well, Men, you I did mean, you many good. times you did. Let all three of us encourage you. Yeah, you should go do fucking it. see it. Yeah. Well, it's a good fucking movie, man. Uh, or I yeah. guess I should probably just rent it, huh? On Google Play or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. whatever. Yeah, it's good. It's okay, good. you like? Because I'm sure it's not on Netflix. It's you know. I think oh, it was on Netflix for a while. But I might, mm, I might be tripping. I don't think so. Yeah, I think I you are. I think you're just making that up. Well, that's fair. Yeah. So, uh, so here's what I saw over the last week: Love, Death, and Robots on Netflix. It's a cartoon anthology. That is like, it's a cartoon Twilight Zone is, is what it is. With a lot of different episodes, all of them kind of twisty, but futuristic. Quite is good. Is it like, is it, what's the rating on that? Was it made for kids or what? Oh, no, it's, it's definitely adult themed. In fact, okay. there's one of the most graphic CGI sex scenes I've ever seen in Love, oh, Death, and Robots. That yeah. sounds awesome. Uh, what, yeah. What's that was <laughs> yeah when how far into the movie was that again <laughs> can i get a can i get a time stamp on that one? <laughs> well Gross. actually so uh it turns out that that particular episode th- it turns out netflix they say is rearranging the playlist on some of these episodes for whatever reason based on your viewing habits they'll rearrange the playlist so i can't tell you that's weird you're gonna have to ask netflix yeah yeah it makes it a unique experience Right, so there's 18 episodes. Each episode is between 5 and 16 minutes long. So it makes it imminently bingeable. And some, as I said, are better than others. 
Mm. One in which See, is this is this back like Black Mirror? Because I I watched a few Black Mirrors and I just the meh. Well, yeah, yeah but like Black I Mirror the first two, and then I like I don't know, I just didn't finish. It. Well, I feel like I've seen them all. You've seen a, one or two Black Mirrors, and you get it. Dystopian yeah, surveillance yeah. state future. I got it. It sucks. And it's an <laughs> hour long, long, bro. You got a cower yeah, on an hour. Yeah, you got to. So that's what I liked about these is that the episodes were on average 10 minutes long. Oh, hey, that reminds me that that's why I also like the YouTube series Dragon Ball Z at Bridge. Aha. Uh -huh. Dragon's off. Dragon Ball Z. How the fuck is Dragon Ball Z still haunting my adult life? Look, well, first off, because they made another show, Dragon Ball Super, which is dope as fuck. And you should watch that. But uh, I mean, did you finish all Dragon Ball Z? Did you Probably. Watch it all? I'm sure I did. Uh, yeah. So anyway, I'm sure I slogged through it. Yes. Dragon Ball Z was <laughs> notorious for being one of the first shows where like they would have a scene like w something that could have been covered in one or two episodes lasted like 30 or 40 episodes. Yes. <laughs> so yes. these guys made this this, you know, cut up version, this abridged version of it. Dragon Ball Z abridged, which I thought was just them cutting it up, but they just dub over it with their own voices. And uh, which I thought was whack at first because I just wanted to see some fight scenes, but it is so fucking good. You should watch it. And then you can watch all and they're five, seven minutes long every episode. Okay. All right. That I could get behind. Seven. That's that. Ain't nobody got time for no fucking three series, one fight. Yeah. The world no. is ending again. Yeah. It's all seven to 10 minute episodes. So it's you can just consume them in small bites. And that's available on YouTube. Dragon yeah. Ball Z abridged. Yeah. Very funny. Good, hmm. good show. And, you know, you get to see all the good stuff, all the good meat. Got it. Well, and that's, again, what I liked about Death, Love, and Robots is that there wasn't a lot of fluff. It was all stuff, no fluff. Yeah, like that. I like that, yeah. Indeed. So, yeah, although some of the ideas are, you know, that there's nothing new under the sun, if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. You can only kind of modify and twist things around a little bit. There's nothing, there's no completely new premise in any kind of mystery or horror scenario at this point. It's really difficult, which, yeah. which means, you know, what are we, what are we, what does this mean? Are we running out of imagination for our future? I wonder. No, well, there might, there just, there's certain constraints. You know, we've gone through, we've seen and experienced or imagined how everything could be in this, in our current perception of reality on this earth. You know what I mean? Maybe once we go into space and experience other planets or if we can ascend mentally somehow to perceive things with some sort of sixth sense. Or artificial we'll be, intelligence, perhaps. Or Yeah, or something like that. Then we'll be able to make new art and culture. Hmm. Maybe. Well, or maybe, I don't know. I maybe. don't know. I, I, I'm thinking about space travel, and I'm always trying to work Uranus into that. But <laughs> yeah, you know, it's a one time I, I got in trouble before I even gave That's a, disgusting, a presentation Sarah. You're about disgusting. the solar system. She pulled me out of class. Miss Wilson, the British teacher from Nebraska oh, City, yeah. Yeah. pulled me out of class and was like, "Yeah, don't before you even give this presentation, don't you even fucking say Uranus, okay?" It's <laughs> Don't even say it. I know what you're going to do, so don't even do it. I was like, all right, Jesus Christ. Don't do anything. So, which made, of going course, to, which of course made me want to do it more. Like, it made it real hard for me not to laugh when I came up to Uranus because I could <laughs> see her piercing her eyes into me from across the room, waiting for me to say it, dude. Yeah. And waiting you didn't, take though. Me back. You didn't yeah. say it. Good for you. I did you said Uranus. So. Although Uranus, that isn't that less, yeah, much less much funny. Better. It's urine us. <laughs> Get it? Urine <laughs> and then us. You're in us. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I should have done that. I wasn't smart enough. Oh, right. well. Yeah, you know, those high school days. We well, wish we could go back. That was, in, that was in sixth grade yeah. or fifth grade. So, Noah, I'd sixth like to grade. congratulate you on finding your keys. That's the point. Noah, yeah, congratulations. Right. I don't think we really properly appraised you for finding your keys. No, I, I think we spent more than enough time on those keys. Oh, I guess so. Anybody else ever lose keys and then find them? Um, yeah, so many times that I can't even think of a fucking <laughs> time. Everybody? Like almost every day. Sometimes I'll just be <laughs> getting, I'm about to leave for work. I have my keys in my hand and like my phone in the other. And then I walk upstairs to go outside and then I look in my hand and my keys aren't there anymore. 
And Legit. I'm like, what the fuck? And I check my pockets, they're not there. I look on the counter, they're not there. And I, like, I have no memory of setting them down. Where the fuck could they have gone? How Dude. far could they be from my current position? And Legit, if I did not have a purse to put my keys into, I would lose them all the time. As it is, I left my purse in Nebraska City this weekend. So like... Mm, you know, it doesn't yeah, really first would just be an opportunity for me to lose more shit at once. <laughs> yeah, my wallet, my <laughs> switch, pretty much everything. Uh, well, but can, I know where it is now. Right, and you can go back and get it at any time. Right. Yeah. 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 So I do have one. I have two stories of key loss which remain baffling. One dating back, oh, 16 years. When I laid you down, Nicholas Shin, for a nap. You were seven years old. And I had we brought you in from the car. You were asleep in the car. I put you and put you down in bed. I had the keys in my hand, and I never saw them again. <laughs> <laughs> but here's the real secret: is that Nick must have a black hole that occasionally appears around him <laughs> to suck up he, keys. Yeah, yeah, that's a, yeah. that's a fact, as far as I can tell. And then the other experience happened. Oh gosh, I guess twelve years ago, I was in no kidding Havana, Cuba covering the governor of Nebraska at that time, a guy named Dave Heineman. He was down there selling wheat to Cuba or trying to. And I, I was know a, that you knew Heineman. Yeah, well, I did. And I was a farm... I mean, I didn't... We, we didn't, like, hang out socially. I mean... I had, I, we I, weren't, I, like, buds or anything. Well, well, my boss is buds with former governor Dave Heineman, so I've met him a number of times. Yeah. How do they... Oh, you should have said, you know, my dad went with you when he was a farm broadcaster down to Cuba. He'd say, oh, yeah. really? No kidding. And well, he, next time I'll do that. Yeah, he wouldn't remember me. But it doesn't matter because here's what happened. So I'm filing stories from Cuba on the Cuban Internet, right? And so I'm in this hotel and I'm, I've am i got my stories on a flash drive back in the days when flash drives weren't necessarily reservoirs for viruses and other malware. And so I put my flash drive into the, the one computer in this hotel that's got internet access and I upload my stories so my work is complete this flash drive is on my keychain that has my keys on it and after I'm done uploading my stories I'm so relieved to have the work done that I walk away and leave my keys in the computer and I don't re realize it until I'm back in Miami and so I still have a set of keys somewhere in Havana Cuba I mean that's not so much a mystery as it is just a tragedy <laughs> well I never yeah. said it was a mystery I just said it was a story uh, involving okay. keys good yeah i'm sure you said something about baffling well it's baffling how freaking stupid i am yeah <laughs> i mean still i inherited that uh, great thanks yeah well i would I, you know i was gonna say yeah. geez you know nick maybe you should you know lay off the the the, the tac or whatever but it sounds the like marijuana it's a, it sounds like it's a family problem no, it's definitely a family problem, dude. For, For as long sure. as I can remember, you've been losing your keys. Uncle Chris always lost his keys. And, uh, yeah, Sarah and I lose our keys. I've just been watching and people. Clearly Noah. Home. And Noah yeah. as well. Yeah. yeah. So it's yeah. And Noah as well today earned his official badge <laughs> for lose your fucking keys all the time. Well done. Well done, indeed. Welcome to the club. Yeah. Congratulations. You. you can't leave. It's my, might I suggest really long lanyards? Yeah. Right. Super yeah, my girlfriend long. tried to give me one, but the font on it was like ugly as fuck. And I'm like, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not having that. I can't deal with this. Yeah. You couldn't deal. Like, no. Yeah. So uh, Nick saw us. I saw Love, Death, and Robots. What about you, Sarah? What's your deal? What did you see this week? What's your deal? What did I see this week? I didn't. I went and played board games on Tuesday because there was nothing in theaters. Okay. And I watched no TV. Okay. So nothing. nothing. Splendid. Excellent. Well done. Did you read anything? I am reading. Um, well, I finished Gone Girl. I, I don't know if I finished that between no, you, last week or not or whatever. You said it was I, good. I we didn't that. spoil it. That was pretty good. Yeah. Uh, the ending was a little weak, but it was fine. Yeah. Was, the rest of it was good enough to bitch. make up for it. Yeah. I don't know. They're something. Gonna, they're going so to stay together. You should have gone to jail at least. Like, you I, know? I kind of wanted a murder suicide type thing to actually happen that would I mean, have been you know what that would have been a better ending because they both certainly deserve to kill each other yeah did they i mean was the dude such a piece i guess it was he I, was it was just unhealthy you know obsession yeah. and but what she took it to the next level dude like well, she was like a legit <laughs> sociopath she was going so. to have him almost literally hanged for nothing well not for nothing but like for something that he didn't do I don't know. He wasn't nice. I mean, she I had will, reasons. It was he had, you know, she did it because he was kind of a piece of shit. But like, well, an asshole, a loser. Certainly, I don't know about a piece of shit. Loser, but. definitely a loser. Anyway, 
so I started reading um, a book. It's definitely a book. <laughs> you and can tell because it's called something, all right. Can you tell because yeah. of the pages and words on it and shit? Yeah. Out okay. of all the books she's read, it's definitely Cert been one of them. Oh, no question about it. <laughs> oh, I don't know why I picked this book up. The Way of Shadows, Night Angel Book One by Brent Weeks. Oh, my it's God. Sort of Sounds horrible. Fantasy. It's some sort of fantasy. Come on, judge a book by its cover. You're not even judging by its cover. <laughs> it's, it's, a title, dude. it's a fantasy <laughs> assassin thing. How can you go wrong? Uh, Bro? You tell me. How many pages are you into it? I'm 5%, oh says my Kindle. God. Yeah. Okay, great. Well, you'll have to. I, uh, well, because I put all these books on hold, right? Because I only read ebooks through the yeah. library and then they check them out to me and I, and don't tell me, which I'm sure is a setting. I just forget to go change it anytime. And so then I've got like three days to read a fucking book. Right. And I don't remember even wanting to read because I put it on my list months ago. So that's where I'm at. That's that's where I'm at with this. Super annoying. Well, I hope it turns out to be a good book after all. I'm reading, I actually just finished a book by Ken Follett, the noted author who did the Something of the World series and the Pillars of the Earth. He's a very famous author. He's published, he's sold over 100 million books. But he, and this book is probably, I don't know, 30 years old, 35 years old. It's called The Key to Rebecca, which isn't what you think. It's actually about a, spy versus spy conflict set in the desert of Egypt in the dark days of 1942 before the first British victory over Rommel at El Amin. As well, Churchill, I hope you enjoyed that. I did indeed. It's great historical fiction, although the ending oh. also is kind of stupid and weak. I'm like, dude, really? It just didn't make sense how it wrapped up. Yeah. I have a whole bookshelf on Goodreads specifically for weak endings. I really and need it's surprisingly to. full. Yeah, yeah. The hardest part of the book seems to be ending it. Yeah, yeah, I mean, how do you wrap it all up, like, realistically? It seems like either you got to kill everyone, you know, <laughs> realistic, or edgy or whatever, or it's just kind of pussified by the end. You know what I mean? I, I, I'm yeah. sure I've read books that were actually good. I had to have, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right. Well, I feel like it's either like it's one or the other. So it's like a whole bunch of just like bullshit you got to slog through and then it's all good at the end, you know, because the ending makes it all like nice and tidy and sweet. Kind of like The Chosen by, uh, by Chaim Potok or whatever. Like that guy, that, that book's like that. It's just a bunch of weird, boring shit. And then at the end, like it all has some meaning, you know? The Chosen, yeah. eh? Interesting. You read that book? No. Who's it by? It's like a bunch of nonsense. It's a bunch of nonsense about it. It's a Jewish book. It's about a Jewish kid's life. Okay. And then, uh, like, this one kid's dad's a rabbi, and then, you know, he's like, yeah, my dad kind of sucks. He never talks to me unless we're doing fucking Talmud study. And then at the end, he's like, I chose to raise you in silence to make you a better person or something. I don't know. I thought the book was weird. Okay, but you liked it is what I hear. Yeah, I don't even remember it, but I remember liking it. So. You remember liking the end of it. You only, know, uh, like, you the know, last it's five pages are the only good parts of that book. But you have to read the first 500 to understand the last five, correct? Pretty much. Something yeah. like that. Got it. Wow, that sounds like kind of a small payoff for a lot of work. <laughs> it, is, it is. You know, that's why I prefer like good like stuff to be at the beginning and then eh, it kind of fills out at the end. That's uh -huh. kind of like Paper Mario, you know? Have you ever played the game Paper Mario no. all the way to the end? Okay. You spend months and months doing it and then you finally get to the ending credits and you just look in the mirror all haggard and starving and you're like, that was not fun. <laughs> I don't know why I did that. No, I don't ever remember finishing Paper Mario. A few days of growth on your face. Uh, Actually, you, know that, you know what that's like? That's like a long civilization game. You know what I'm saying? You're playing Civ Five. Fun at yeah. the beginning. You have this massive empire and it's just fucking exhausting at the end. Yeah, you're not even doing it for fun anymore. It's just on principle now and you just fucking <laughs> hate it, but you can't just you can't just die. You have to be killed or, you know, lose. So it just goes on and on. It's like it's, a game of a war of attrition between you and the game. You start to think that it's fucking with you, that it's in your mind. Did they make it like this to make me fucking do this? <laughs> But then they didn't, and, you know, then I, you turn it off. You go outside. You shave your face. I, I can't, you wash your ass. I, I can't tell you how much this reminds me of the story I just read on Video Game Addiction. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm just kidding, dude. It never gets to that point. <laughs> right. I mean. I can sense when it's starting to get, like, out of control. And, that's when and I, then you step away. Right. Yeah. And that's when I switch to the weed. <laughs> well, I don't, you know, that's right. just kind of going right. throughout, right, yeah, 
right. So close. I got some questions. Got some questions for you guys. All right. Uh, Want to answer? Uh, yeah, I'm. I'm ready. All right. This is for everybody. I want you to think real hard. Okay. Oh, okay. Now, before you ask the question, let me just give a quick shout out to our binge listener, Ben. Hey, Ben. Thanks for listening. If indeed you've ever listened again, appreciate. Yeah. You. Thanks he, for listening. Hey, actually, last week he texted me and said, "Hey, thanks for the recommendation on Gone Girl," because he listens to stuff while he's working and he said that's been really good so i uh, he at least listened to that one ben so, you're gonna hey ben. ben you're gonna Shout really you. you're gonna really enjoy the key to rebecca all right very good no he's not yeah. yeah okay all right yeah thanks thanks for listening keep listening please if you don't we'll know all right <laughs> what's the most valuable object you've ever touched guys the most valuable object i've ever touched yeah what's the most valuable thing you've ever touched you mean like personally to me or objectively speaking mm. because otherwise the answer is my Let's wiener i've definitely Your like <laughs> 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 without which none of us would be here. <laughs> it's a it's priceless <laughs> from that point of view <sighs> okay <laughs> bringer of life <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I was gonna the most say fat boy fucking answer I've ever heard. <laughs> I couldn't help it. My dick, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go uh, slam a brewski. Uh, I, couldn't, I couldn't help it. I just could not help it. I'm so sorry. All, All right. right. Yeah, I teed it up for you. You did. Sorry. You knocked it out of the park. Good job. <laughs> I was gonna say monetarily, probably. I mean, I've touched some walls of that Mexican palace. That's probably it. Mm, okay, I'd buy that. Sure. Okay. Well, when we took that tour of the White House, Nick, remember that? Yeah. I, I secretly licked a wall to see if it was that the wallpaper was Schnozberry. Okay, that's uh, illegal. <laughs> I uh, did. I didn't do it. And pretty, pretty dumb, to be honest. I did get uh, sick. A lot I, of lead paint in I gotta, the White House. I got. I got. Yeah. Yeah. They definitely use lead paint in the White House. Uh, so good job there. Uh, Chinese lead paint. I, at no point did anyone say anything tasted like schnozberries. Uh, so that's another thing that's kind of weird. But, you know, good well, job. Thanks. I'm pretty sure it did lower my IQ several points. <laughs> Dick joke. Right? I mean, isn't that proof? All right. So anyway, no, I don't know. I, You know, if I think about it, I can't think of the most valuable thing that I've ever, you know, touched. I'm sure it's some weapon system. You know what the most valuable thing I've ever touched is an F-22. Those, those... Not, your, not your children? You've held your children in your hands. Well, how much Yo, could we be not, sold? Not all of us are worth that much. <laughs> are we worth an F-22? They <laughs> <laughs> would trade us for an F-22. I don't think Fuck so, no. man. I mean, from a chemical composition, what's the average body worth? Like $2.25 or something? Something like that. Yeah. 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 It's cheap as fuck. Yeah. I guess I could have redeemed myself, though, couldn't I have? And I failed. Yeah. 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 Well, it's okay. We're talking about monetary value. I can't think of anything right now. No. What? What about you? Well, so uh, at the hospital, I was working at, oh, yeah. So, by the way, I'm moving to a new job site, and that was kind of a big deal. Now. Oh, but, okay. Yeah. Congratulations, um, I think. Yeah. Is it closer, I hope? You were driving a long way to that no, old job. No, no. It's, it's just as long, if not longer. But um, I'm working at a paper mill now. I'm starting tomorrow. But uh, but still doing electrical uh, stuff, right? Yeah. 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 Same, same company and everything, just yeah. different job site. Um, but um, freaking, so in the in the underbelly, the, the deep, dusty, dark underbelly of the hospital, yeah. they have these, like, massive freaking power i don't even know what you call them cables it handles power and shit it's like a power mainframe oh, i guess nylons. i'm sure there's a word i should know i just don't yeah um, guy would know he would but there there's like it was like i have the actually i have the measurements on my phone but it was something like 700 volts going through it and then like freaking 600 or something amps or something horrifying like that like massive amounts of electricity i'm sure that thing has to cost like a lot of fucking money yeah i bet it does okay. that's a good point yeah. Good one. Yeah. That's a good one. I don't know. Well, Fancy awesome car. Boiler. You know, actually, anytime you touch an aircraft, and all of us have touched aircraft, even if just by sitting in one. I guess those, that's true, yeah. I have sat in an airplane, so that was probably around. We sat in that military plane when we came yeah. to receive you or whatever. Did you that's do probably. that? I'll tell yeah. you what, man. My memory of that is so hazy. It's so uh, hazy. Mine is too. I can't remember if that's when you were leaving or coming back that we were in the military plane. Yeah, I can't remember that either. But mm. I do remember being in that military plane. That's probably the most expensive one. Okay, good. So uh, here's the next one. What is uh, This one says, what is some of your favorite words? But let's narrow it down to what is your favorite word. Word? 
Yeah. What's your you favorite word? You time to prep for this, you motherfucker? No, no one gets time no. except me. Uh, well, based on my last answer, I'm going to have to say wiener. Okay. Wiener That's is a good abortion. It's, it's a great wiener way. or abortion? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They go hand in hand. Okay. <laughs> abortion is kind of fun, like, to say. I don't know why. It's like, it's got the correct vowels and arrangement you know of consonants. Else, you know what else has a good mouthfeel? What's that? Ignoble. Ignoble, indeed. Yes. Ignoble. Mm -hmm. Or okay. dastardly. I like, I like that the one word gargantuan. Oh, that's a great say one. The word gargantuan and everything. I will tell you a word that I use often, uh, perhaps too often, is splendid. How are you today? Splendid. splendid. I'm splendid. Thank you. I've been saying dope a lot. Yeah. Dope. Yeah. Dope. You, yeah. Just, just at like uh, you know inappropriate times. Yeah. Like when <laughs> I you know spill water all over someone or something. Dope. Dope. <laughs> right. AIDS. <laughs> AIDS. <laughs> I mean, it's Say not even a word. It's an acronym, but it yeah. fits so many such situations, really. Okay. So we've uh, mm. we've got what what were yours, Noah? I didn't hear anything. I didn't My hear favorite it. word was abortion. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> was, How could I forget abortion? All right. <laughs> yeah. That's so, like the visceral reaction to like. There's always someone has a look on their face the minute you say that. You know. So what I'm to say abortion. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, okay. I do anyway. like I actually do like using that word occasionally when saying something has gone terribly wrong. Well, that was that meeting was an abortion. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. yeah, like a movie. Yeah. Like that movie was an absolute fucking abortion. Right. <laughs> also, but but go hand in hand with that abomination. Yeah. Right. Like exactly. Abomination. Yeah. I feel like abomination. Yeah, that's a good one. But you got to be careful. No, I agree with you, though. You do have to be a bit cautious when you break out the A word. Uh, people get uptight about that. Yeah, you know, well, that's funny. funny. They consider yeah. it murder, you know, so. Some of them. Mm, that's not, <laughs> Let's not go there. Right? Right? It's not so. All right. Anyway, uh, what would you say is the oldest trick in the book? <laughs> Prostitution. Over Prostitution. Is that what you said? No. Yeah. No. That's what. That's what Dad said. Dad said oh. prostitution. <laughs> prostitution. Yeah, that's a good one. Actually, I, he, I, I'm going to have the same answer as I have had for the last two questions. <laughs> My wiener. <laughs> that's okay. It was a joke in the book. <laughs> Like, it fits every time. It's like an ad lib, you know, a noun, a verb, and an adjective. <laughs> oh, oh, that's uh, funny stuff okay. right there. I, I would don't say like it's, it's the old so look behind you trick. Oh, I see. Yeah. Or what's on the ceiling? No. Or, or over there. Or, or, or the, the old touch your finger to someone's shirt and, oh, what's that? And then you <laughs> uppercut them as hard as you can when they look down. Well, I don't know that that's the oldest. I was thinking, like, you know, got your nose from a baby. Yeah. That, you know. Oh, or peekaboo. That's the oldest yeah. trick in the book. Ah, there you go. That's pretty yeah. old. Peekaboo. Yeah, it was in, uh, it was in nice. Age, it's so it's frankly of... horrifying, though, because babies have no sense of object permanence. Like, you are literally removing your, yourself from their it's existence. Like teleporting. It's fun. It's a fun yeah. little show. <laughs> <laughs> so no sense of object permanence. According to who? Scientists? Yeah. What are we listening to them? Have you poured over the numbers, the <laughs> figures yourself? Mm. Yes. Oh. Babies have no object permanence. I oh. see. Although okay. this does tie into the fact that more and more Americans are skeptical of science. And you know why? Because we're fucking stupid. Because we keep saying the science isn't decided yet. Mm. Yeah. So science. Hmm. Anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, so what were we talking about? Oh, yeah. Those are good questions, Nick. Well done. Yeah, good, good, I mean, good questions. I got more. We can save them for next time. Oh, I see. Well, these have I been got... these have been pretty good, though. Well, yeah, we can do more, well, or we can save them. Let's I... do one more. One more. Just one a, more. Just one okay. more. Yeah. All right. What's the dumbest question someone has like legitimately asked you? Like they were this. serious. Okay. How do you make the forward slash go backwards? <laughs> yeah, that's dumb. That's well, dumb as fuck. Use the different key with the right correct slash. I yeah, I, and here's the thing: is that I got asked that a couple times. I, I gotta so, I gotta say though, I feel good that I know the answer. That makes me feel smart that I know the answer to that. Uh, yeah, yeah. Who's next? Oh, well, okay, so, well, all right, so, I mean, as an instructor, as a former instructor of, you know, officer candidates, you can imagine the number of stupid questions I used to get, right? Oh, yeah. I, I mean, I used to get all kinds of stupid, so many that I can't possibly remember any of them. I mean, yeah. I used to get a stupid question every day. Every day I would get a stupid question. Like, it, do you mean this? <laughs> well, late, listen, I just said that. 
So yes, I mean this when I said that. That's exactly what I meant. I told you exactly and precisely what I meant. And now you're asking me the question, did I mean what I just said to you? And the answer is yes. Yes, I meant what I said to you. Why are we still standing here? Exactly. So those get are th- going, asshole. Those are the kinds of questions I used to get. Did, did you really mean that? Yes, I yes, I meant that. Indeed, I did. You can trust me when I tell you something that I indeed mean what I say when I say this, that, or the other thing. That's exactly and precisely what I mean, and I want you to do exactly that immediately. Go! Yeah. Right? So. Wow, you flashed back there, dude. I sure did, didn't I? Yeah. <laughs> you heard it back. That was I fun. saw. I can see your eyes on the camera, dude. They just went completely white for a second. <laughs> <laughs> they went milky and cloudy. <laughs> I dealt with a lot of students. What can I tell you? A lot of questions. Yeah. Okay. That's fair. And almost all of them stupid. Uh, there's no <laughs> such thing as a stupid question, right? Um. Yeah. No, there's plenty. I think there's a stupid question. Yeah, that's a stupid statement. The statement yeah. that there's no such thing as a stupid question is itself stupid. Yeah. Yeah. You know who said that? Who? Someone stupid. <laughs> a stupid person. Right. Who's used to asking a bunch of stupid fucking questions? Yeah. Am I right? And it- they just wanted to feel good about the fact that they don't know shit and they got to ask everyone which way is what all the fucking time. I figure it out. <laughs> uh, Fuck. But seriously, though, sometimes you got to ask a lot of questions. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. when someone's asking you to ask a lot of questions, like, yeah, if you have any questions, ask me. Yeah. That's a good time to ask, you know, the important question. But, I don't know. I can think of a bunch of, I can tell you about the, I don't know if this is the dumbest, it's not really a question, but it's like, this woman, it was, I just, I thought she was fucking with me. She was really <laughs> stupid. Right. She was just really stupid. Right. She comes in, this is when I was a bartender at Stroud's, and okay. she was, she came and sat down and ordered, she's like, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna read my book here while I eat my lunch. So don't ring my shit in yet, but can you give me an old fashioned? And I was like, okay. So I made an old fashioned for her. And she's like, you know, I give it to her. She's like, thanks. I come back around in a couple of minutes. I'm like, yeah, how you doing? She's like, this old fashioned. Did you put any bitters in it? And I was like, yeah, I did. There's bitters in it. And she's like, well, I just don't taste any bitters. Like, could you make me another one and uh, like put more bitters in there? And I was like, okay, sure. Can do. So I make her another one and I put three, four more drops of bitters in there. Right. And I give it to her. And then she comes back up to my bar. At this point, when someone bitches, like, I know I made that fucking old-fashioned right. You know what yeah. I mean? Right. Like, so, I double, triple checked it. You yeah, looked it like up. I, I make a hundred of these things a fucking day. I know I made it right. Like, so when I had to remake it for her, I'm like, that's what you're getting now. I'm not going and checking on you anymore. So she comes up to my bar and she's like, this is too bitter. And like, <laughs> was, at that, it's right there. I thought she was fucking with me. You know what I mean? Like, uh, well, you told me to put bitters, more bitters than the usual recommended amount. So it's going to be bitter. And she's like, and I, oh my God, it's all coming back to me. She's like, I think it's the whiskey in here. And I'm like, no, it's definitely the bitters. <laughs> like, that's what's made. You said yourself that it's too bitter. So it's the bitter. She's like, well, what kind of whiskey did you put in here? And I'm like, I put some Knob Creek in here. She's like, well, I've never heard of that. And I was like, uh, okay. Well, we You got- did not tell me to use name brand yeah, fucking I'm, high well, shelf whiskey. Well, there, Knob but- Creek is not a cheap whiskey. It's a decent no, Knob whiskey. Creek's, Knob Creek is really good. But at that job, they told me to not use well unless they told me to use well. Okay, right. So In that shit. But anyway, so I was like, I sh- I've never heard of that. And I was like, all right, well, I can make you some with Jack Daniels. She's like, I've never heard of that either. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. So many points at any time where I'm thinking like that she's got to be fucking with me. But if you say that right like are you fucking with have you me? ever had an old-fashioned before ma'am <laughs> well yeah if you like think if you are, are you joking right now then they would get really offended if they're not which i could tell she wasn't so i was just like so explain to me how you would like me to make this for you please what do you yeah what do you what do you what do you mean when and then, you say old fashioned? Okay, this has been going on for like five minutes. I ask her to explain how she wants me to make it, and then she just looks down at the drink in her hand. She's like, eh, actually, this one's okay. And then she went. <laughs> <laughs> shit that will make you quit your job on the spot. I was just like, what the fuck just happened? Why did you do this? Like, you got bamboozled. I wasn't mad. I was just like, you're a puzzle. You're a puzzle. 
Yeah, I understand. Yeah, I was puzzled. Yeah. So puzzled and confused. <laughs> like, like, she was a clear, like she was in her mid she was a middle aged woman, didn't see a ring on her finger, was reading a book at fucking, you know, in a restaurant at noon on a Tuesday. So yeah. Do you think, I think she was just been, Yeah, coming on to you? Is that what you're thinking? Her, no, that just might have been her whole interaction. Yeah. Her whole day. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, maybe you should have spent some more time with her. Asked her a few questions. Maybe Rock, she should no, have been dude. so fucking weird. <laughs> I just couldn't. I did, like, at the end of it, I could feel myself being patronizing, but there's no <laughs> way, other way to talk to her. I, I was like, I exhausted all of the options here. So so what the fuck are bitters? It's alcohol that's, you know, like. Is it bitter? Shitty. Is it bitter, <laughs> though? bitter yeah, yeah well i mean it tastes bad <laughs> i've only smelled it i've never like when a drink calls for bitters it's like it comes in like a worcester and worcestershire it's- bottle <laughs> you know what i'm saying how yeah. it only comes out in drops okay uh, and those drops are bitter you can i would assume so yes yeah that they're bitter. <laughs> i wonder what they're made out of it's i don't know but they got like I can't remember what the alcohol content is, but it's yeah. This pretty is high. this is where I tragically reveal that I don't drink oh. like ever. So it's that's not really okay. tragic yeah. at all. No, that's, it's not. It's fine. No. It's probably for the better. Yeah, yeah. probably for the bitter. <laughs> See what I did yeah, there? That was some of the dumbest shit that ever happened to me at work ever. All right. There's been other times people try to pull shit over on me, but like that was just like she could. I, neither one of us had any idea what was going on. That was like, <laughs> yeah. at any point in our. <laughs> I'm just like, do you? What do you? All right, whatever. Like you're speaking different languages, but not really. Yeah. Now I'm getting taken back. Now I'm flashing. Have back. you ever seen the the video uh, of what it would sound like if English was not your native language? Yeah, I've heard that. It was like that. Yeah, I mean, I guess it was just yeah, indescribable stupidity. You know. Well, you just described the hell out of it. I'll tell you that. <laughs> yeah, I'm not doing it justice, man. <laughs> I wish you could. You know, we haven't heard we haven't heard Noah's stupid question. No, anybody ever ask you a stupid question? No, like people have asked me tons of stupid questions. I just can't think of anything on the spot. You know what I'm saying? I understand. I, 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 yeah, that's why we yeah. saved you for last. I can think of stupid answers, like, like once. So that's we fun. had the super concussed guy, you know? Yeah. At, uh, back in the medical platoon. Yeah. And uh, he he was kind of he was always off. Like he just came too close to you because he couldn't sense the distance anymore. He was really fucked up. But one time we asked him what state we were in, and he was like, "Oh, we're in South California, right?" And I'm like, "Yeah, dude." You keep going, buddy. Yeah. Crayon eaters. Anyway. All right. Yeah. Someone mistaking South Carolina for South California. That's dumb. That's just dumb. It's not smart. Poor guy. He had a rough time. Yeah. I feel for him. Well, in any event, welcome back from um, welcome back from Marine Corps basic training, by the way. I think it's urban. Actually, It's good to be back back from that. Yeah. Glad to have you back. Glad to have you back on the show. It's been a while. It sure has. Hey, so I don't, again, we, we've run out of time to discuss sports, but I will say this. I said this at the outset. If, if Kentucky wins the NCAA championship, I win my office pool. Hey, I did put together an office bracket. Yes. Oh, I don't gamble. I don't like to participate in gambling. No, I'm, I'm not gambling. I'm not. This is for pride. This is the only. Okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah, well, I mean, there is, there is, you know, but, but yeah, the, the one guy I work with, there's only like seven management team. And then we've got like, I don't know, 10 call center guys and they're all girls. Uh, but, but he bullied us into um, filling out our brackets. I was like, Ryan, I have zero idea about basketball other than I know that there's a basketball, there's two hoops and there's two teams and they dribble. That's it. That's all I got. Like, I can't, I don't know what lines are. I don't know what the rules are. I don't, well, you don't need to know that. Honestly, all you got to do is pick a team to win. That's what I did. I was like, he's like, doesn't matter. Fill it out. And I was like, okay. And I filled out, you know, the names that I liked the best, but I did surprisingly well for straight up chance. Well, yeah. The I first mean, round. You almost have as good odds. I don't know. Maybe not. Well, then my, the, one of my coworkers was like, well, here's the point spread and here's what these little numbers down there i'm like i don't give a shit i don't get like i really i'm not gonna watch it all i want to do is beat you motherfuckers by chance yeah so yeah but but somebody losing kansas state lost right to somebody 
and uh, apparently that fucked up a lot of brackets yeah. in our office. Yeah, a lot so. of brackets have been busted, but I generally have gone with just the team that had the most wins. That was my approach. If you had more wins, you were going to get my vote, generally speaking. So, um, and I just thought Kentucky, because you can never rule out John Calipari, who's the coach of the Kentucky Wildcats. He's a notorious cheater. This is already more than the rest of us know combined. Got it. I, I have no idea what the fuck you're talking about. Basketball. You know, they don't have that in Canada. Uh, but uh, uh, Canadian invented it, actually. <laughs> they did not either. They didn't invent that. It was John. Uh, have you ever heard of Dr. Julius Irving? Yeah, Canadian. That man was a wizard in the paint. Thank you. He was a Canadian? No. <laughs> 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 right. Us little fella named Kareem Abdul Jabbar. Ever hear of him? Born in Toronto. Yeah. Larry Bird. Yeah. <laughs> French Lick, British Columbia. The, the best part of this is all of this is almost believable. Yeah. It's all bullshit. Yeah. Although I was a big fan of Larry Bird, and I do know that he was indeed from French Lick, Indiana. They called him the Hick from <clears throat> French Lick. Oh, would you, would you mind if I just uh, read something off to you? Yeah, go ahead. James Naismith, November 6th, 1861 to November 28th. 1939 was a Canadian American physical educator, physician, Christian chaplain, sports coach, blah, 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 blah. He invented the, the game of basketball at age 30 in 1891. In, in Kansas, <laughs> correct? Basketball rule book and founded the University of Kansas basketball program. Yeah. So let me just tell you a little something about Naismith. You said something in there where you described him as Canadian American. Now, which half of that do you think he was more of? Do you think? He was <laughs> born in Almont, Ontario, province of Canada. Before we were... He was and, born there. He right. had the Canadian blood pumping through his veins. When that he sweet, that sweet action. maple syrup blood, huh? Right. And then he yeah. disavowed Canada and came to Kansas. Well, yeah, because he has like basketball better. Well, he could have had some gambling debts or, you know, maybe he <laughs> murdered somebody or some shit. Maybe the villagers were after him and he had to relocate. It was the freaking 1800s, man, you know? That's true. He could have been a vampire. That's a good point yeah. right there. Has anybody ever explored vampire. whether Naismith was a vampire or not? Let me look. I doubt there's any pictures of him and Dracula in the same room together. Has anyone seen him since then? <laughs> All right. To explain that, atheists. <laughs> <laughs> so you do believe. Uh, okay, very good. All right. Well, kids, this has been great. Are we missing anything this week? I don't think so. I, think I mean, uh... look, I know you said we didn't have time for sports, but Wonder Boy did get knocked out. Oh, yeah. yeah. And that was pretty impressive. You got... Uh... Stephen Wonderboy Thompson was fighting Anthony Pettis, and he was piecing him apart. I think it was in the second round he got knocked out. Yes, sir. that's correct. Second round he got knocked out, but I, dude, Anthony Pettis was getting his ass whooped. His face was all busted up. His arms and legs were bruised, bruised, and uh, then he just came off the cage, off the back of the cage, and fucking knocked. Superman punched him. Yeah, Superman punched him into the shadow room. Wow. Cool. So Anthony Pettis moving up to middleweight, as I recall, or was it welterweight? Anyway, he put Welter. on a bunch of weight Welter. for that fight. And uh, there was a lot of concern about whether or not he was going to be able to. That's uh, a good thing. Putting on weight, like going up a weight class usually means they're going to do better. Well, and he talked about it in his post-fight win. He was like, clearly, you know, the the other divisions I was fighting in, I was killing myself to get to cut weight. And this is healthy and I'm, I feel great type thing. That's the thing is if you're cutting weight like that to get down to your weight class, you're not fighting at your prime. Look what look at DC. He went up to heavyweight and got that championship real quick, and he's undefeated at heavyweight. Which he's, I mean, he hasn't been taking a lot of fights, but still. Nevertheless. He looked a lot better at heavyweight than he did at light heavyweight because he wasn't doing those weight cuts. The yeah. idea is to get someone smaller than you. That's why you weight cut, cut weight, but if you're fucking a goddamn skeleton trying to make that weight, then you're not you're right. fighting good. The other thing I'm going to shoehorn in here is my girl, Macy Barber, won her fight. Much in the same fashion, she too was getting pieced apart by whoever she was fighting and then ended up... Just busted her face, like broke it. She just whacked her right in the went face. Went in for the kill. She, she, couldn't ha she couldn't take it no more. She must have some rocket punches. All mm -hmm. right. Well, that's good news for Anthony Pettis getting his career back on track, actually, after uh, uh, I think he lost his last three fights or something like that. And then and then your girl, Macy, uh, good for her. She's undefeated. Undefeated. Yeah, I saw her win in uh, Denver. She's so, a wee babe. She's only 20 years she's old. she's pretty fucking hot, dude. She's 20, she's 20 years old. She's pretty fucking hot. She's undefeated in the UFC. And, and who That's is this? My girl. Who is this fighter? Ma Macy Barber. Macy Barber. 
Yeah, huh. look her up, dude. I'm going to right this instant. She is. She's cute as hell. <laughs> Although Make, she's, I mean, it seems to me, obviously I'm not a fucking UFC fighter, so I'm just armchair generaling right now, but right. she sh needs to work on her defense. Yeah, like she's absolutely. just got the power. She's got that ultimate power. That's yep. why she knocks girls out or just makes them crumple. But yep, she's she a brawler. Have, she's yeah, a she's, brawler. Yeah. You don't want to go full brain damage mode or else you'll get Cody Garbranded. I got you. So, but I mean, you say she's undefeated and she is, but she's only had seven fights professionally. Yeah. Yeah. But she's 20 years yeah, old. I mean, yeah, she, she's 20. She's 20. You don't, you don't get to uh, have many professional fights at that age. Well, that's Usually, true. And she did all. beat, so she beat J.J. Aldrich's ass. Is that a, a fair statement? Uh, yeah. She, she punched her in the uh, face so fucking yeah. hard that she just stopped fighting. Crumpled. <laughs> Jesus Christ. But, oh, but what's her name? Was, J.J. or whatever was piecing her apart and then yeah. got She was slipping past blasted. her offense and getting her. There was no counterattacks, but it was just that one punch, and then she was like, oh, shit, I can't fight anymore. Well, yeah, and she's someone who's gone up 10 pounds in weight, too. So, I mean, obviously, you, if you're able to fight at that heavier weight, man, you got a lot more power. Yeah. All right, yeah. well, okay. that's that's good. Good for Macy. Yeah. I, I, I hope she sticks with uh, UFC and never ends up in WWE. Yeah. For sure. She might she might do the old Ronda Rousey routine because Ronda Rousey was an upcoming rising star that seemed unbeatable. But then it was like, oh, wait, she's only good at judo. And there's this kickboxer here who knows jujitsu and shit and is also good at judo. Yeah, I, they, I'd be interested to see how, how what was Ronda Rousey's record ultimately by the time that uh, she left the octagon? I think she only uh, Sarah's looking it up. I, I think she was only, she only had like 14 wins. I could she, be wrong. I think she only lost the one time, maybe twice, and then, but the, it just fucking destroyed her. Her official record was 12 wins, two losses. And yeah. there you go. I mean, so. 12 wins. Not that great. Think about this. Five more fights, and Macy well, is there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is correct. Did you guys say Ronda Rousey moved to WWE? Yeah, man. Yes. She She's a villain. It. Wasn't that freaking, uh, she was, she was trained by the uh, Rowdy Rowdy Piper, right? Wasn't that what he did? She wasn't trained by him. She just believes in him or something. I don't know. Maybe he you was. Don't really need to be trained to be in the WWE. You just got to do a lot of steroids <laughs> and cocaine. Like a mentor or just a homie. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. Look at, look at some kind of relationship. man, Randy Savage. Okay. Yeah. Rowdy Roddy Piper was really more of her spirit animal, I think. Yeah. That, that was of more of her Patronus than it was her mentor. <laughs> you know? As it were. Hey, one other quick uh, sporting news for those of you who are Patronus. One other quick sport news. Rob Gronkowski just announced his retirement. He, the. Uh, oh, really? Yeah, world famous tight end for the New England Patriots. Uh, one, an unstoppable force when healthy. Dude, the Browns oh. are starting to look pretty stacked. Bro. Oh, they are. I dropped my harmonica, by the way. That's the noise you heard. But yes, they are. The Browns look like a fearsome team. The question is, how will they find a way to lose? <laughs> yeah, I, I agree. I think they'll manage it. All right, well, kids, anything else? No, I think that about covers it. All right, great show. Uh, way to start us off, Noah, and way to finish us up, uh, everyone else. Well, good job. Oh, shit. What am I doing here? <laughs> that, that didn't sound terrible. Like, you're the only one who knew that it was wrong. Yeah, I knew it was wrong. I couldn't, I couldn't hack it. Got to do it again. A Shin Show is a production of Shinfluence. It features the voices and sounds and opinions of the Shin family and occasionally the McCone family as well. The opinions expressed are those of me those people that are making them. This is really smooth, isn't it? The Shin really? Show would like to deafen you with our harmonica playing at the end of every podcast. And, and at the beginning as well. It's brought to you on a fake basis by Ziss, Fine Dining in Invercargill, New Zealand, and by The Throne Room. Heavy Tattoos, also in Invercargill, also brought to you on a fake basis. And also by our one listener, Ben. Thanks, Ben. Join us next week. And join us whenever you'd like on Apple Podcasts, Google Play Music, and wherever you get podcasts, you can download the whole thing. Be like Ben. Download the whole damn thing. Get on that YouTube. <laughs> get right. Just look up Shin Show. Yeah, a Shin Show. It's also available on YouTube. Good point. You know, we really do need to start making the video available. One of these days. Bro, we'll that's, that. I just listen to it on YouTube. Yeah, it's a good idea. If I listen to it. <laughs> if you listen to it at all. And that's, you <laughs> listen, know, we, I was there. 
<laughs> right. We would maximize. We'd probably increase our uh, listenership by about two, three hundred percent if we all listen to it. So yeah. No, let's just. Let, I'm just putting that out. There. Get some more views. Get some more eyes on that bitch. Yeah. Right. Did well, we also review our own thing? Is that is that where we're going? Oh Christ! No, no. no we're weird. not doing that. That is. I mean, whack. isn't isn't that what it's always been, really? Oh, yeah. now we get a video. What do you mean? The, Noah. Was, Noah showed you, up. You can't he see any face. video, can you, Dad? Oh, well, I'm kind of behind glass, so no, I can't. Blind, it's, it's kind of scary. It looks like you're in like a saw prison. <laughs> right, right. It does. Vampiric. Like that. Yeah, it's, well, that's that's a, that's my design. I I actually just look vampiric normally. It's draconian. Yes, as it were, draculonian. Right. Is draculonian a word? I think it's a good word. I it could be. It. Yeah. I mean, if you say what it, we that... know what it means. Then yeah, that's his favorite word. Surprise. <laughs> no, my favorite. No, no, no. My favorite word is wiener. We've already established that. <laughs> don't get it twisted. Right? <laughs> no, don't. Get a wiener twisted either. <laughs> it's quite painful. Yeah. Oh, no. Quite painful. All right. Well, uh, kids, good to talk to you. I sure love you. All right. Love you, too. Don't anybody get their wieners twisted this week. <laughs> Check. Roger. I, I certainly hope not. All right. All right. Bye. No promises, though. <laughs> no right. promises. Bye.